Hi friends, in this session we are going to discuss an important topic from quantitative aptitude which is data sufficiency. Generally in data sufficiency a question is given followed by two statements and we have to check the sufficiency of the given data. That is we need to find out whether one of the two statements or both the statements together will be sufficient to answer the question or not. In most of the questions from data sufficiency we need not solve the question and find out the exact answer. But we only have to check whether the given statements will be sufficient to get the answer for the given question or not. As I have mentioned a typical data sufficiency question will have a question followed by two statements. But in some cases question with three statements is also given. And here we have to check which of these three statements or a combination of which of the given statements will help us to find out the exact answer. Let us take a simple example to understand how does a typical data sufficiency question look like. As you can see here we have a question followed by two statements statement 1 and statement 2 and then there are five options for the given question. Now the question here is what is the value of the integer x. So the simple question is we need to find out the value of the integer x. Now first statement here is x lie in between 40 and 50. That means x lies in between 40 and 50. And the second statement is x is a multiple of 7. So x here is a multiple of 7. The five options are as follows. The first option here is only statement 1 is sufficient. So our answer will be option 1 if statement 1 alone can help us to get the answer but statement 2 alone cannot give us the answer. Second option is only statement 2 is sufficient. So answer will be option 2 if only statement 2 alone can give the answer for the given question and statement 1 alone is not sufficient to get the answer. Option 3 says either statement 1 or statement 2 is sufficient. So if any one of these two statements can give the answer then we have to go for option 3. Then the next option here is both the statements together are not sufficient. So as per option number 4 even if we use both the given statements together we will not be able to get the answer. So in such cases we need to mark answer as option 4. And the last option here is both the statements together are sufficient. So as per option number 5 when both the statements together can help us find out the answer we need to go for option 5. So these are the five typical options which are generally given for a data sufficiency question. So depending on which of these two statements help us in finding out the answer we have to go for one of these five options. So let us now try to solve this question and understand what would be the correct answer. Now as we can see the question says what is the value of integer x. So very clearly we need to know x is equal to what and at the same time it is clearly mentioned that x is an integer. What is the value of the integer x. So x has to be an integer that means there is no decimal part in the value of x. It is an integer. If you look at statement number 1 it says x lie in between 40 and 50. That means x should be between 40 and 50. Now the integers that we have between 40 and 50 are 41, 42, 43 so on up to 49. So we can say that from statement number 1 x can be 41, 42, 43 so on up to 49. It lies between 40 and 50. So these are the possible values of x. One important point to be noted here is always in data sufficiency we should be able to find out a unique answer from the given statements. Only then we say that the question can be answered. Otherwise question cannot be answered. Now if you look at statement number 1 we know that x can be 41 or 42 or 43 so on up to 49. That means there are 9 possible values of x as x is an integer and it lies between 40 and 50. But here we are not able to zero in into one particular value or I can say we are not able to find out one particular unique value of x. So that is the reason statement 1 here is insufficient to answer the question. Why? Because it gives us many possibilities but not the unique value of x. So statement 1 alone cannot give us the answer. So once statement 1 alone cannot give us the answer, option number 1 cannot be our answer. So if statement 1 fails to answer the question, now let us go for statement number 2. Statement 2 says x is a multiple of 7. What does it mean by a multiple of 7? x can be any value which is in terms of multiples of 7. That is x can be 7, 14, 21, 28 and so on. 
so the possible values of x from statement 2 are 7 14 21 28 35 42 and so on up to infinity now again even if you look at statement number 2 we are able to find out the possible values of x these are all the possible values of x as x is a multiple of 7 but what exactly is x out of these infinite values is not known to us and as I've mentioned earlier, we should be able to find out a unique answer from the given statement. Only then we can say that the question can be answered. Now since statement number 2 here is not giving us a unique answer, we can say that statement 2 alone is insufficient to answer the question. So hence, even option 2 cannot be the answer. Why? Because only statement 2 is sufficient is not the correct option here. So, so far we have understood that statement 1 alone or statement 2 alone cannot give us the answer. So if that is the case, even option 3 is ruled out. Why? Because option 3 says either statement 1 or statement 2 is sufficient. So if both of them individually are giving the answers, then we go for option number 3. But here, none of them give us the answer individually. So answer here cannot be option 3. Now once both the statements have failed, that means statement number 1 is not able to give the answer and statement number 2 as well is not able to give the answer, we have to go for combination of these statements. That means we use the given data in both the statements together and see if you are able to find out a unique answer or not. So here let us now go for the combination of both the statements. Now if you look at statement 1 we know that possible values of x are 41, 42, 43 so on up to 49. And from statement 2 we know that x can be 7, 14, 21 that is nothing but a multiple of 7. Now we need to find out those multiple of 7 which lie between 40 and 50. That is nothing but we are trying to use the information together. We know that x should be a multiple of 7 and it should also be between 40 and 50. So let us concentrate on only those multiples of 7 which are between 40 and 50. Now we know that 7 into 6 is 42 and 7 into 7 is 49. That means by combining the information together we can say that x is equal to 42 or it can be 49. Now if you look at this, these two values satisfy both the given statements. As per statement 1, x should be between 40 and 50. So 42 and 49, both are between 40 and 50. And as per statement number 2, x has to be a multiple of 7. Both 42 and 49 are multiples of 7. Now very clearly, even when we use both the statements together, we are not able to find out a unique answer for the given question. Here, two possibilities are there. x can be 42 or 49. That means, even after combination of both the statements together we are not able to answer the question hence we say that both the statements together are not sufficient to answer the question that means the answer for this particular question should be option 4 that is nothing but even if we use the statements together we are not able to find out the exact answer of x or the unique value of x suppose by combining both the statements together if we are able to find out unique value of x or the exact value of x then we can say that option 5 is the correct answer that is both the statements together are sufficient but here as both the statements are not sufficient simply option 5 is ruled out so this is how we should approach for a data sufficiency question we first have to check statement 1 alone then we have to check statement 2 alone and then if required we need to go for combination of both the statements some important points that I would like to add here is in data sufficiency we should never mark the answer until and unless we have read both the statements. Simply by reading statement 1 alone or statement 2 alone we should not go for a conclusion. We should mark the answer only when we have read and understood both the given statements. And the other important point here is combination of both the statements that is nothing but both the statements together have to be checked if and only if individually they fail to answer the question. That is, if statement number 1 alone is not able to give the answer and statement 2 alone as well is not able to give the answer, only then we have to go for combinations. Let's say statement 1 alone gives the answer and statement 2 alone does not give the answer, then we should not go for combination of statements. In this case, the answer will be only statement 1 is sufficient. And likewise, if statement 1 is not sufficient and statement 2 is sufficient, then we can say that only statement 2 is sufficient and we should not go for combination of both the statements. So this is how we can answer a question from data sufficiency by reading the statements in a step by step manner. So let us quickly have a proper approach towards solving a data sufficiency question. As you know we have got two statements statement 1 and statement 2. Now here there are two possible answers that we get from statement 1. It may be sufficient or may not be sufficient. So let's say there are two possibilities from statement 1. Either we can get the answer or we cannot get the answer. 
Similarly, from statement 2 also, there are two possibilities. Either we may be able to answer the question or we may not be able to answer the question. So again, here we have two choices. Either it may not give the answer or it may give the answer. Now, let's say statement 1 alone is giving the answer and statement 2 alone is not able to give the answer. Then we go for option number 1. Similarly, if statement 2 alone gives the answer and statement 1 alone does not give the answer, then we go for option number 2. That is only statement 2 is sufficient. But in case both the statements are not able to give the answer, that means statement 1 alone fails to answer the question and statement 2 alone fails to answer the question, then we have to go for combination of these two statements. And when we combine the two statements together, again there are two possibilities. The combination may give the answer or may not give the answer. If the combination of two statements gives the answer, then we have to go for option 5. That is both the statements together are sufficient. And if the combination of two statements is not able to give the answer, then we have to go for option 4. That is both the statements together are not sufficient to answer the question. So very clearly combination should be used if and only if both the statements individually fail to answer the question. In some cases, statement 1 alone may give the answer and statement 2 as well alone may give the answer. So in such cases, we mark the answer as option 3. That is either statement 1 gives the answer or statement 2 gives the answer individually.